Welcome to Greywood Gardening. Well, spring is here, the weather is warm, all of the beds in the veggie garden are prepped and ready to plant. We have the garlic coming up, we have the first radishes and spinaches coming up, and I'm now planting uh, the first lettuce of the season. So I thought today, rather than just hanging out and planting stuff in the veggie garden, I would walk around Greywood and talk about what the major projects that I have in plan for this year, which there's a handful of projects and then a couple more that I don't think I'm gonna get to realistically, but I refuse to completely give up all hope. So let's start right here in the veggie garden. All right, the first task to be done here in the veggie garden is to put down a new layer of wood chips. It has now been four years since I built at least the first part of the veggie garden, and really last year, the wood chips had pretty much completely broken down till it was just like it is now, basically dirt. So I've got two years out of those wood chips. The third year, they really should have been replaced. What's interesting is there's now just tons of weeds growing everywhere, whereas this used to be pure sand and nothing would grow in it. So what I'm thinking is I will replace the wood chips this year, but maybe three years from now when it breaks down again, there might be enough organic matter that I can go ahead and maybe, maybe plant some grass and clover and have some living pathways rather than wood chips. I'll have to mow it, but then again, I won't have to come in and replace it every three years. All right, the other project, big project for the veggie garden is this area right here, right next to the gate. But we want to turn this into a sitting area where you can just kind of like hang out and enjoy the garden or take a break while you're working. So the idea is I've got everything laid out with four by fours. I'm going to dig this down one to two feet, because again, under these wood chips is nothing but sand. Dig it down a couple feet, backfill it with dirt. Um, I think we're actually gonna plant it with grass. We'll get a bench here. I want some sort of vine on this back fence. Uh, we're still thinking about it, but uh, the work on digging this out is gonna be a pretty big chore, and I think I need to do this early in the spring because I really, by the end of May, want to be ready to plant vines, shrubs, and whatever in here, even if it takes a while to get the bench. So <clears throat> another major project for this year is I want to turn this area here, which is just off to the side of the butterfly garden and the wildflower meadow, which is kind of nothing right now. I want to turn this into some kind of a lawn. I want there to be some place where the kids can run and play, and we really don't have anything like that. So we're gonna take this area at the back, um, and it doesn't have to be a really nice lawn, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, it doesn't need to be weed free by any means. In fact, I will plant, uh, I'm pretty sure, tall fescue and uh, some sort of clover in here. But what I'm thinking about doing is actually dormant seeding them, which means I won't put the seeds down until like November time. Um, and then they will overwinter, and in the spring, everything should come up and be great. Which gives me the entire summer to clear out the logs, clear out the random branches, um, and, you know, at the end of the year in the fall, strip the top layer off to expose the soil, maybe put some extra soil down, and get sort of a decent-ish stick-free area for the lawn to get, uh, to get seeded into. So I'm looking forward to this one, even though we won't actually see the lawn until next year. Although, I bet you if I get the sticks out of here and I just mow this, that'll just kill off almost anything that isn't grass, and it'll probably look halfway decent by, uh, by mid-late summer. So, another big project for this year is to finally finish building a path through this little piece of woods behind our house. Now, I've gotten a good start on it, taking advantage of our crazy warm February this year, and got a good chunk of the trail extension done. I, but what I would like to do is, at a couple nice places along the path, build a little sitting area, a little clearing for a bench, 
and then do like a little woodland planting around it. Now, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna plant, but it has to be something that will tolerate the dense shade of the woods and that the deer won't eat. So daffodils are definitely an option for the spring. Planted these guys in this first piece of the trail a couple years ago, and they're going strong. But maybe, I don't know, maybe like wild strawberry, which is kind of a ground cover that turns bright red in the fall, or a whole bunch of other things. I think it's a really interesting gardening challenge. Like, what can I plant in this little, this little woodland setting that, by the way, is also pretty dry, and I will not be able to water it after I establish it. Ooh, maybe Japanese painted ferns. There's a lot of there's a lot of options, but first, there's a lot of work clearing out brush and cutting up logs and getting the path established. Really looking forward to this project. I don't get to play in the woods nearly often enough, and combining that with gardening, I think, is going to be really fun. Okay, here is the first project that I don't know if we're actually going to get it done this year. And that is to replace this gutter with like a dry stream bed. And that would cut across the mulch area and all the way across the grass down to the driveway. This is actually Mrs. Graywood's idea, and I think it's a great idea. And you just dig out basically a trench and you line it with a bunch of stones of different sizes. And then I think what we would, could also do is take out the grass between the stream bed and the sidewalk and turn this whole area into another garden bed that's like an extension of the porch garden. And then you have grass over on this side. The reason we may not get to it is Mrs. Graywood has made it clear that she has to make every decision uh, involving this from which exactly which rocks we buy, exactly the path, exactly where the garden is and what gets planted. And she is not certain that she's gonna have time um, when I have time to go to the store and buy the rocks and come out and decide on the path. So I'm still hopeful that we will get to this one because I think this would be fun and would look great. So this is the other big project that I am almost certainly not gonna even get started on this year, but man, would I love to. So this is the lowest part of our property. This is in the woods. It's like a little flat basin that's like 80 or 100 feet lower than the veggie garden. Um, and because of that, despite the fact that we have super, super sandy, well-draining soil, down here, the soil is much richer in organic matter and stays moist almost all the time. It's very cool down here, it's at a low point. And you can't tell now, because it's too early, but this entire giant basin floor is just filled with ferns. They're not coming up yet, but every time you see something like this throughout this entire basin floor is all just a sea of ferns. And what's interesting about this, po this place is that a couple big trees have fallen and has kind of opened up a hole in the canopy. There's a couple, there's more than a couple, there's a bunch of buckthorn trees that need to get taken down. But I feel like there's kind of a cool opportunity to make like a magical fairy woodland garden down here. And again, because enough light gets in here, I feel like you could grow a huge array of plants, including lots of plants that I can't grow anywhere else on the property because it's so dry. Whereas here, it's wet, I could grow orchids, I could try to grow a lady slipper, I could grow pitcher plants, you could grow just all kinds of amazing stuff down here. And I just, just the fact that you're starting with this big basin with a floor that is just covered with these giant ferns, I think just gives you a really magical starting place. That said, I have agreed with Mrs. Graywood that this is not a priority for this year. Everything else I've discussed, plus all kinds of other like inside projects and building furniture and stuff is a higher priority. And so I think it's incredibly unlikely that I'll even be able to get started on it this year. If I'm really lucky, maybe I can get started on the clearing in the fall. But I think this would be just, just one of the coolest possible gardens if you can keep the deer from eating everything. So someday, someday, this is on the wish list. What are your projects? Please leave a comment below. Tell me what are your big gardening projects for this year? And tell me what are your gardening projects that you wish you could do, but you realistically know you just don't have the time for. All right, until next time, happy gardening.